what is up you guys welcome back to another vlog today i'm so excited i'm out in the backyard and i'm gonna be filling one of my raised beds with soil so we built this raised bed a few months ago and we just haven't got around to filling it but today is the day and i'm so excited so i can get more vegetables planted for fall so let's stay tuned for what takes place today got a little bit of work to do because some weeds have grown up through in here but gonna get it all taken care of all right guys so i wanted to give you an update and show you what i've done so far so we cleared out all the weeds we got everything cleared out again we laid down this hardware cloth and then on top of it we're laying this fabric this weed cloth fabric to try to eliminate some of the weeds if you have cardboard i would recommend putting the cardboard down first then laying this weed fabric over it so i'm using this staple gun to secure the cloth it's beneficial to go higher to keep the soil from seeping out of the cracks and crevices the higher the better All right, so this is our situation in the bed. It's not as neat as I would have liked it, but I got the fabric to keep the soil in as much as possible because it seeps throughout these cracks if you don't put the weed fabric cloth all the way up. This is our soil we got, and we got some compost. So we're gonna get started with the top soil in first. Then the organic potting mix. Top layer is gonna be compost. So it was making its way in. So this is about 10 bags, no 12 bags of topsoil. We're just gonna break up some of the big chunks, even it out, and then we'll start going in with the potting mix. Guys, what is up you guys? Good morning. So it is the next beautiful day, next beautiful morning, and I'm out in the garden. It's, the weather is just amazing. Fall is definitely in the air. So yesterday we got our second raised bed filled and today I'm going to just amend the soil with a little bit of amendments that I have. I'm going to be throwing in some azomites, some worm castings. I'm getting the bed watered in right now and let that soil get settled a little bit because that soil was really, really dry. So we ended up using 32 bags of soil and then all the extra containers that I just had I ended up pouring that soil in there as well because eventually I'm going to be getting away from containers so this is so exciting for me because I always had the vision to have raised bed two years ago couldn't wait anymore I couldn't wait anymore so I said you know what I'm not going to hold off anymore because at that moment I wasn't in a position to have raised beds I wasn't able to build it myself and I wasn't the logistics of things just wasn't in my favor then so I said you know what I'm gonna just start a container garden and that's what I did I, I got some pallets I went dumpster diving for pallets dumpster diving for pallets and I came out and I laid them out where I wanted to start and I started out with containers from Publix bakery those are food grade containers so I established a relationship there with the manager she was holding the containers for me I was bringing them home cleaning them out drilling holes and that is how I started first I actually started with a kiddie pool my girl's old kiddie pool drilled holes in there added soil and I grew collards in there which that kiddie pool now has strawberries growing in them and I'll show you that in just a minute but that hummingbird just flew right past don't wait just because you you're not in your ideal situation don't wait because you can't have raised beds don't think because I have a small growing space I can't grow anything container garden is very easy to do I did it so I have all the experience with container gardening and now I am transitioning into my raised beds and now I'm learning how to grow in raised beds because now I have to figure out the spacing of things in the containers it was easy because I just gave each plant their own five gallon ten gallon container now now I have to figure out the spacing and everything like that. So Jessica is right when she said, turn your waiting room into a classroom. I love that quote from her because I learned so much in that time when I was growing in containers. I'm sad to say that I had started several plants from seed and I went out of town on an unexpected trip and I lost majority of those plants. I was only able to keep nine plants. They just dried out so fast and I'm going to show you what they're looking like now and I was only able to save nine or twelve plants. I'm happy that I was able to save those. I'm going to show you those. I do have those already planted in some fabric fabric containers 
and I picked up some starch from a local nursery that I'm gonna get planted in this bed. Some broccoli, some kale, some lettuce. I think that's it. Without further ado, let me stop talking and just show you guys the raised bed that we filled. These were all the seeds I had started and I lost them. Some are trying to come back, but I had dino kale. I had, the, the tags are kind of wore off, so I can't really see. I had Napa cabbage. I had all different type of collards and kales and mustards. I was gonna plant one more round of tomatoes. That one survived somehow. And then I think this is a cauliflower. She's trying to come back. A cauliflower, this looks like kale. Yeah, that's the red Russian kale. I might be able to keep her. I might get her planted and see what she does. Some broccolis. And then a lot of things bolted and started going to seed. So I lost all these plants. These were the these were the ones that I was able to bring back a light to life. And I have those planted. So this one I was able to save. This one is a Swiss chard. This is something I'm trying to save. Some type of broccoli, I'm not even sure because the tags didn't make it. This is a Georgia collard I was able to save and a kohlrabi. And that was all I was able to save. I went ahead and put those in those containers right there. Oh, you look, a yellow finch. A yellow finch just flew off. But over here, this is what I was able to save. I'm, get, I'm watering them in right now. This is the red Russian kale. This is the red Russian kale. These leaves are ready for me to eat. I'm gonna start harvesting some of these leaves. This is the scarlet kale. It's very similar just to the regular kale. And these two right here are blue collards. Then I have a blue kale, similar to the dino kale. And then I have two mustard. This is what I was able to bring back to life. But it is what it is. Still gonna get things popping in this new bed. So I had it covered because right now it's the cabbage moth it's very heavy out here. I'm trying to protect these leaves. These leaves are looking really good. I'm gonna start harvesting these and I uh, probably won't cook with them. I'll probably just be using them for my smoothie. So here, I'm just gonna show you guys what is called the cut and come again method. So you see all these leaves. You would come through here and take off these bottom leaves. You would harvest like three or four leaves from each plant. When it comes to greens, that is why you have to have more than one plant. Because you need to go through here. Oops, I just damaged that one. You need to take a three from this one, three from this one, three from this one. And that is how you're going to end up with a whole stack of greens. You can't remove all the leaves from one plant. You don't want to cut down the whole plant. With the cut and come again method, you cut a few off and the plant will grow more. And the more you harvest, the more the plant will grow. So I definitely want to come out here and get some of these leaves taken off already so they can grow. Give me some new leaves. This one has some new growth coming in already. This one's looking good. This is just similar to the regular curly kale, but it's perp's called the scarlet kale. I try to grow things that are a little bit different that if I'm gonna put into work, I want things a little bit more exotic, so to say, that I can't just always get at the grocery store. So these varieties are not the typical varieties. Sometimes you can find these at Whole Foods, but that's probably about it. Or a farmer's market. You're not going to find these really at like Publix or Harris Teeter. They usually just have the regular dino kale and the regular curly kale. But anyways, I'm going to get the continue to get these watered in. Start getting things planted in that raised bed. Let me show you this, this kiddie pool. My strawberries aren't looking too good. But this is the kiddie pool that I started in. I'm gonna show you guys a picture. When I started back in March of 2019, this was collards, my first garden bed, basically. And now I'm on to two raised beds. This is the second one. It's all filled up. So the plan is get rid of this. And this palette is already gotten rid of yesterday. But where this palette is and where this palette is is gonna be the next raised bed. So I'm gonna have one raised bed, two raised beds, three raised beds. And then I'm gonna have an arc trellis that is gonna connect to each bed. And that way I can have my vining crops like watermelons and pumpkins. They can crawl up that arc trellis. Then I'll be able to walk under it. So that is the game plan. That is the vision. It takes time. Doesn't happen overnight. This didn't happen overnight. This took time started out in all containers the whole garden was containers and now this is what it's looking like so how it started versus how it's going and let me show you one more thing lessons learned from mistakes that i want to share with you guys you see this <clears throat> 
this was my first bed <clears throat> so it was my learning experience you see this weeds grass grass is going out through through this raised bed and that is because I didn't do what I was supposed to do properly so with this bed I used that weed fabric all the way up and so now it's not gonna be able to seep out through these cracks it probably could but just not as bad and then the soil is not gonna seep out see the soil sometimes seeps out of that one but hey you live and you learn right so now I know what to do next time and I'm sharing my mistakes with you guys so that you can do so you can do better but let me stop talking and start getting things planted bird bath cleaned out from my yellow finches the yellow finches love coming to this bird bath and it is such a beautiful sight to see those birds are so pretty and they come here several times a day so I'm gonna get this cleaned out so they can have fresh water telling you guys it's a backyard haven out here there's so much life out here we found several snakes yesterday but that is part but that is part of gardening this is their natural habitat mother nature we didn't kill the snake they out here and now this is nice and clean and getting this soil this dry soil wet getting this watered in add some amendments and start planting so excited to grow more food in a larger growing space larger footprint so one more thing that I wanted to show y'all so since I just gave these greens a haircut what I like to do is go in with this fertilizer it's fish and kelp fertilizer with molasses the molasses makes everything sweet I love using these on my strawberries as well sometimes I brew my own tea but when I'm not brewing my own tea I use this fill up a gallon container of water with a tablespoon of this I'm gonna feed these plants so they can grow more leaves fast like within two or three days these things will be full again lush green leaves because of this one gallon container oh, about one and a half tablespoon of this these greens are going to jump back so fast. So over here in this bed, I got to get the rest of my stuff out the garage. But I need husband to call some of that stuff. Mostly greens. Greens love blood meal. Blood meal promotes rapid vegetation growth. So this is good for heavy feeders like spinach, broccoli, and leafy greens. This is an organic source of nitrogen. We'll add some of these worm castings. Organic fertilizer. I'm gonna use the, the rest of this bag today. I'm gonna get that in there. Gonna get some azomite in there. Whole bag of nutrients in here. I got some bat guano. I try to do all organic or natural if possible. So in here, we got alpha meal, bone meal, fish meal, potassium sulfate, cat meal, and cat flour. Also has mycorrhizae. Do a couple cups of that in there. These plant starts are pretty stressed. I got these at a local nursery. They didn't look this bad when I purchased them, but I brung them home. It's been about a week or so, and I haven't done nothing to them. They are hungry, they're stressed, and they've been drying out too much. So look what they look like now, and I want you to see how they bounce back. They got a lot of pest damage because of the cabbage moth. The moths are out bad. You know what the key thing is? This water filter. This water filter is another key component to the lush greenness of this garden. I highly encourage everybody to grow some greens. Grow your own food, even if it's just one thing. That's one less thing you gotta buy at the grocery store. Because the honest truth is, even if you buy organic, by the time it gets to your plate, by the time it makes it to your kitchen table, there's not that many nutrients left in that food. The travel miles on our food is crazy. Look up travel miles on food. You're going to be blown away. And nothing beat just walking out in your backyard in the morning and harvesting a bundle of greens and cooking them that day. Things that you thought you didn't like, you probably like. You just didn't like them from the grocery store. Grow your own greens. Grow your own food. Just one thing. If you Just do one thing. Grow one thing for me. But anyways, I got that filled up, right? So I'm going to go ahead and eyeball. I don't 
got no measuring out here, but I've done this so much, I kind of know how much these need. We'll go ahead and goop, 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 give this a good guzzle. And water these in. Go ahead, water her in, give her a good drink. Water all these in. These greens are gonna bounce back so fast. I'll be harvesting them again in two or three days. You gotta feed them. You gotta feed your plants so they can feed you. I put lots of TLC up into my garden. I try to put organic if I can, natural if I can, so that I can have the best fueling my body. Let me show y'all what else I do. See, I'm just telling you all my secrets. So I want y'all to be successful. So this is what I do. I fill up this galvanized can of water. Then I pour a little bit of this pour some of this fertilizer in there and then I dunk my plants start in there and give them a jump start before I plant them because they're stressed right now so this dunking their roots into this I've already watered them in so it's not like this is gonna be their first drink water them in real good I'm gonna dunk them in here and then I'm gonna get them planted Soil amendments in. Time to rake it in. Are slow release amendments when it rains or when I water that's where these nutrients will seep down to the root for the greens in each planting hole I'm adding blood meal to the bed but I'm also going to add some to the hole because the, the amendments on top isn't going to reach it right away that's going to be a slow releasing amendment that's going to take time with watering so I'm just getting everything watered in and I'm gonna start spacing everything out and I'm gonna start planting and if you can't get all these amendments, that's fine. This is just added stuff. This is just gonna help them be more beneficial, but you don't have to have all of these ingredients. Start with what you have. All right guys, time to get planting. I couldn't find my ruler, my measuring ruler. So I'm just gonna use this sit stick. I'm guessing this is like, I'm just gonna say 10 to 12 inches. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna use this to measure me out. I'm gonna lay this stick down. I'm gonna make a hole here. I'm gonna make another hole here. And then I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna make a hole here. And I'm gonna make a hole here. So I'm gonna put three plants down that row, three plants down this row. This is all approximate because I'm not really measuring nothing out all the way. So I'm gonna give them a dunk and then I'm gonna lay them out where I want them to go. So this is the Cole Robbie. She's looking pretty bad. We'll see if Miss Cole Robbie snapped back. All right, we got Cole Robbie here. Let's go ahead and take him out. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna take off some of these dead leaves. That's not looking too good. I'm gonna leave something on there. I'm gonna give her a good soak. Give her a good dunk. Soak up some of them nutrients. And put it back in here for now. Give this one a good dunk. But I'm gonna put about one of these little spoonfuls in each hole. Pour that right up in there. Get that kohlrabi right up in there. Might need to go a little bit deeper. The soil is not really too wet, so it's not staying. Now take a look at this kohlrabi. Look at the leaves. She's not looking too good. But we'll see in a couple weeks how she bounced back, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these planted. And I'm gonna show you guys what they looking like when I'm done. So I'm gonna get this romaine lettuce planted here. And I hate to say it's kind of like wasted space, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. So I highly encourage you to learn the plants that you wanna grow and learn about their root systems. So all these kales and broccoli all have huge root systems. They can enjoy 12 to 14, 16, 18 inches. 
And that's why I built this size raised bed because I knew what I wanted to grow here. I wanted to be able to grow tomatoes here. I wanted to be able to grow big brassicas and allow their roots to have a lot of space to grow. Now, I'm gonna plant this romaine here, but lettuce like this and spinach, they don't have huge root systems. So this is gonna take up three spaces here when I could be growing something here that needs a little bit more space. But since I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and put it here and it, it will thrive here because it's gonna have a lot of space, but it's not necessary. It doesn't need that much space. It would do good probably like in a five gallon container or even a three gallon container I've grown them in. That's just one note that I wanted to let you guys know is learn what you wanna grow and learn their root system. Strawberries have a small shallow root system. They wouldn't need to be growing in a big bed like this. This would be a waste of space just wanted to point that out there but the bed is looking good i got everything all planted and guys i'm gonna be honest with you these plant starts are looking pretty sad but when i come back here in a few weeks you're gonna be highly surprised how they recover i guarantee you these look at this one that's the main one i want to show you guys that one looks so sad oh my gosh i purchased them from the local um, garden center i brought them home and i haven't done anything with them and i haven't been watering them look look at this one sad so sad but i want to tell you there is hope there is hope they're gonna bounce back and i'm gonna give y'all an update here in a few weeks this is done i'm gonna water them in i'm gonna give them some fertilizer and i'm gonna wrap this up thanks for having fun in the garden with me this morning playing in the dirt i love it it's so therapeutic and that is it i'm gonna wrap this video up guys and let me know if you plant some fall greens or if you have any questions please let me know down in the comments below bye guys one last thing I highly encourage you guys to do is to get some support up in here and do it early while the root systems aren't really established so that you're not damaging any roots. But when these plants start to grow and we get winds, the winds will come through, they'll snap these uh, these greens neck, they'll snap them. So I'm going to get some stakes put up in here like these little wooden bamboo stakes for some support. And that's how it's looking guys. I'm going to eventually get it covered. I want to get it covered. Like I have these to help reduce the pest pressure so that I can eat the greens and not the pests. But that's what it's looking like, guys. Too easy. I'm so happy. This makes me so happy. More food. More food. And the vision is coming alive, guys. But well, thanks for hanging out with me today. Until next time. My first harvest of my fall greens. Not too shabby for my first one. This is what nine plants give me. Mustards, kale, and collards. I'm gonna cook all of them together. That's gonna be tasty.